haven't drank any coffee for the past six months and today I'm gonna have my first cup of cold brew from Starbucks. I've been studying exactly what happens to my body when I'm drinking coffee every day and what happens when I stop it. But after looking at the scientific research, there's some pretty significant benefits to drinking coffee every day as well as some pretty harmful side effects. So why am I back drinking coffee? Well, I discovered a new way to drink it without those side effects. And I'll share that with you by the end of the video. But first, what does drinking coffee every day actually do to our body? And why is it so addictive? The main component in coffee is caffeine, and it's the reason why it makes you feel so alert. It's naturally found in the seeds of berries from a certain coffea species. When insects interact with these berries, they actually become paralyzed from the caffeine and sometimes even die. So in a way, they kind of act like a natural pesticide. But when humans ingest caffeine, there's a totally different effect. In 2013, scientists conducted an experiment where they placed two cups of sugar water, one with caffeine and one without caffeine. When they had bees try both drinks, three times as many bees remembered the scent of caffeinated sugar water, which showed that caffeine not only improves your memory, it also has a reinforcing effect. There's two main effects that you can feel from coffee within 60 minutes of drinking it. The first is it decreases your feeling of being tired, and that's because caffeine blocks adenosine receptors, which is the chemical that makes you feel tired. And second, caffeine also causes your brain to release neurotransmitters like dopamine and norepinephrine. Dopamine is the same chemical that you feel when you achieve a reward or you feel really happy. And because coffee helps release that directly, whatever activity you enjoy doing, you'll probably enjoy doing it more while drinking coffee. This is what increases our alertness, ability to focus, and even our memory. This is why so many people enjoy working in a coffee shop. It's because it makes work feel addicting. For me, one of the biggest benefits in drinking coffee every day is the improvement in athletic performance. I started drinking coffee when I was a freshman in college, around the time that I started lifting weights. And it wasn't long until I found out that there was a huge advantage to drinking coffee and working out at the same time. It not only made the workouts easier, it actually made them addictive. Because every time I worked out, there was a dopamine release from the workout and a dopamine release from the coffee. A 2011 study also found that ingesting 1.4 milligrams of caffeine per pound of body weight before a workout can increase not only your endurance ability, but also your strength. And this can lead to more muscle synthesis and more calories burned just from one cup of coffee. Because coffee also blocks the chemical that makes us feel tired, adenosine, it can actually mitigate the feeling of becoming fatigued while working out or going for a run. So whereas you might only be able to do five reps before, with coffee, you can do eight reps. But besides athletic performance, coffee can also increase your longevity. I'm gonna get a haircut. Yeah, but besides athletic performance, drinking coffee every day also increases longevity. So besides caffeine and coffee, there's actually other compounds that are only found in coffee and not in tea or other type of caffeinated drinks. And there are polyphenols and antioxidants. And these compounds have been found to have anti-aging and longevity benefits. So in a study conducted in the United Kingdom, they looked at over 170,000 people between the ages of 37 and 73 for a seven year time span. And they found that those who drink black coffee had a lower rate of all-cause mortality by 16 to 21%. And all-cause mortality basically just means your chance of dying from any cause. It actually didn't matter how much coffee you drink. Those who drink coffee had a lower rate of all-cause mortality compared to those who didn't drink coffee. But the curve was more of a U-shape. When you drink just a little bit, there's almost no effect. But as you drink more, it goes down. And when you drink even more, your rate of all-cause mortality rises again. So from this study, it shows that the ideal range for longevity is to drink between 2.5 and 4.5 cups a day. But what if you add sugar to the coffee? Interestingly, this study actually found that if you add just a little bit of sugar, it actually decreased your rate of all-cause mortality even more. It had a 29 to 31% decrease versus 16 to 21% for black coffee. But unlike black coffee, if you went past three grams of sugar, which is just a sugar cube, it would actually be worse than if you didn't drink coffee at all. And if you use artificial sweeteners instead, they actually found that there was no effect on all-cause mortality, which might be explained by the artificial sweetener counteracting the benefits of coffee. It's definitely fine to add a little bit of sugar, but if you order sweetened coffee outside, it's usually at least 10 grams of sugar. So it's still better to go for black coffee for the safe side. Does the amount of caffeine affect the benefits of coffee? This study actually looked at different types of coffee consumption, from ground coffee to instant coffee to decaf coffee, to see which would be the best for decreasing all-cause mortality and what they found might be surprising to you. Basically, each of them had a U-shaped curve 
including decaf coffee, which meant that maybe the benefits that coffee has for longevity actually doesn't have that much to do with the caffeine content. So even if you don't drink coffee at all, it might still be worth drinking decaf coffee just for the longevity benefit. But before we talk about the optimal way to drink coffee and how much you should drink, it's important to also understand the downsides of drinking coffee. And the first is caffeine dependence. So if you drink coffee every day, you'll slowly start to be dependent on it. And the same dose will feel less stimulating, which means that you'll either have to up your dose or you'll have to drink coffee just to reach baseline. There's this book, Caffeine Blues, and it basically talks about all the negative side effects you have from regular caffeine usage. One of the ironies of caffeine is that even though we are drinking it for more energy, it ends up causing fatigue directly. And the energy you get is only borrowed energy from the future. For example, take your hand and clench your fist tightly. Hold it tight for a few seconds and then let go. What happens to your hand? It'll get tired. And this is the same mechanism that happens to your body when you ingest caffeine regularly. First, you feel a burst in energy, but then afterwards, you'll tend to feel weak and then you'll develop a dependency on this drug. Now can I have another one? No, I'm satisfied. I know when to stop. And I do not. <laughs> I've definitely gotten to that point where even with just one cup of coffee a day, I became dependent on it and when I didn't have it, I would not have the ability to focus and even experience headaches sometimes. And it would negatively impact my sleep because I could see on my sleep score. But since I would just depend on coffee, I always just felt like I could just drink more coffee to offset any bad sleep, which is really a negative cycle. But it turns out there is a way to drink coffee regularly without becoming dependent on it or having it negatively impact your sleep. So the first part of the solution is that when you do drink coffee, you drink it only 90 minutes after waking up. Most of us who drink coffee probably drink it within 10 to 30 minutes of waking up. That is useful for waking up immediately or getting into a flow state. But if you drink it right when you wake up, this often tends to lead to a crash in the afternoon. The second part of the solution is to create a schedule for coffee. When you drink coffee every day, you're setting yourself up for caffeine dependency and also just desensitizing your dopamine receptors. Although drinking coffee can temporarily boost your athletic and mental performance, when you drink it every day, it goes away. And it's not coffee that's harmful, it's the increased caffeine usage. Andrew Huberman talks about how it takes roughly two to four days for your body to completely clear itself of caffeine. And so if you're already dependent on caffeine and you get caffeine withdrawal when you don't drink coffee, then it might take a couple weeks or months going cold turkey to reset that baseline. Look at this graph. It shows how long caffeine stays in your body after ingesting it. If you drink a cup of coffee at 10 a.m. with 250 milligrams of caffeine, by 10 p.m. there's still 60 milligrams of caffeine. And even by 10 a.m. the next day, there's still 10 milligrams of caffeine left in your body. So even if you never increase your caffeine usage and you just drink the same cup the next day, you now have 260 milligrams versus 250 milligrams the day before. This is what leads to dependency and increased usage. So the best strategy is to create a schedule for caffeine usage. If you just drink coffee every other day, then you're giving your body enough time to completely get rid of caffeine and return to baseline. You could also maximize the effects of caffeine by taking breaks longer than 48 hours. And even on your off days, you could drink decaf coffee and get the longevity benefits, which doesn't really have anything to do with the caffeine content. But before I quit coffee for six months, I made a video where I quit coffee for seven days and documented my experience. So you can check that out if you're interested. But if this video has been helpful for you, consider subscribing and let me know what other topics you want me to make a video about. And if you do drink coffee every day, let me know what your experience has been. I'll see you in the next video.